Uh, so now this one, we uh, we'll just quickly recap uh, uh, alkanes and alkenes, and then we'll move towards, and after that we'll move towards benzene, which is which is A two. So, uh, and this is just going to be a quick recap of uh, of both alkanes. And alkenes. So alkenes were these uh, non-polar uh, saturated molecules. So they are saturated hydrocarbons. Everything is a single bond for alkenes. Uh, so one example is you've got uh, carbon and all of the atoms and they would be hydrogen and they would be making single bonds. So that is an alkane, and this is specifically propane. Got three carbon atoms. Uh, so that's that's alkane. So pretty much uh, you already know what an alkane is. Uh, the general formulas don't usually work uh, because alkanes can be uh, cyclic. Alkanes have have a different general formula. Uh, saturated means all bonds are single bonds, and in an alkane. Remember that carbon is going to be sp3 hybridized. So carbon is sp3. Hybridized. So uh, what that means is that uh, carbon has a total of just a quick recap of what of what hybridization was. So carbon had a total of uh, six electrons. So its outer shell was 2s1, 2px1, 2py1, and it was 2bz1. So that was, that was carbon's outer shell. And uh, when it is sp3 hybridized, what that means is that carbon has a total of four electrons. Remember these these orbitals, they represent uh, they represent electrons. That's it's the region where the electron is moving around. So it has four electrons. So when carbon is bonded to four atoms and making single bonds, that means all the four electrons they get pulled in four totally different directions. So you had one electron being pulled in this direction, one in this direction, one in this direction, and one in this direction. So that means the carbon atom is sp3 hybridized and its orbitals would kind of look like this that one electron goes up one over here and this is known as a tetrahedral arrangement uh, one of them is coming out of the board towards you and there's one on the right side so this one is a tetrahedral arrangement the electron densities are getting pulled by four different atoms and their nuclei so I mean, if you have CH4, that means, and all these orbitals would now be known as sp3 hybrid orbitals because they look exactly the same. You can't call them S, you can't call them P. So the only thing that happens is when you have sp3 hybridization, that the names of the orbitals change. Instead of calling them 2S, 2PX, you just call start calling them, all of them sp3 hybrid orbitals. So, so remember this, you've done this in AS, uh, that alkanes uh, are uh, saturated, they are te tetrahedral. The carbon atom is tetrahedral and uh, the angles are going to be 109.5. That, that's the first thing. Now, alkanes being nonpolar are kind of unreactive. Uh, they have low melting and boiling points. So the physical properties are they've got low melting and boiling points and they are not soluble in water in polar molecules. So not really soluble in, in water specifically, polar molecules, because they are non-polar. Uh, the reason they have low melting and boiling points is because they only have Van der Waals forces. So they only have one type of force Van der Waals. The carbon and hydrogen bond is not, doesn't have a huge electronegativity difference. So those are some of the properties and they're not soluble in water. And uh, the other thing is they're also unreactive because they are nonpolar, they're also kind of unreactive. They don't, 
they don't react. So they're very unreactive simply because they don't attract other molecules. Now, they only undergo one very specific reaction apart from combustion. And that specific reaction is a free radical substitution. So let's go over free radical substitution very, very quickly, one second. So they, they undergo just one uh, very specific typical type of reaction, which is known as uh, a free radical substitution. Now, remember, free radical substitution doesn't only happen with alkanes. They happen with anything that resembles an alkane. So it happens with alkanes as well as alkyl chains. The carbon chains, they also look like alkanes whenever you have a carbon chain. So either it's an, it's an alkane, like a ethane molecule, or it's going to be, it's going to be I mean, if you have a butanoic acid, double bond O and OH, this one has two hydrogens, two hydrogens with this, and you got three hydrogens with this. So what will happen is that uh, this part is an alkyl chain. So the reaction will also happen with an alkyl chain. It's going to be exactly the, exactly the same. And the reaction usually happens with uh, chlorine. So the reagent is either going to be chlorine or bromine. The reaction is kind of very slow with the uh, iodine and happens too explosively with, uh, with fluorine. So that is not done and sunlight is needed. And just so in this case, um, the first thing that happens is, I mean, the overall reaction kind of looks like this. You have a Cl2 and you have, So is this clear up to this point? Yes, sir. So anyway, so so the overall reaction is you've got uh, you've got chlorine or bromine, and they're going to react. And uh, when they react, uh, any one of the hydrogen is going to be it's it's going to be replaced. Uh, the chlorine molecule is going to come in, and any one of the hydrogen or multiple hydrogens can be substituted and replaced by uh, chlorine. So there's going to be a substitution reaction that will happen. So this thing would become, and it's a completely random reaction. So any number of products could be formed, any number of substitution products could be formed, whether it's a monochloro substitution product or multiple chlorines getting substituted. And the other byproduct usually is an HCl molecule. So that is what what happens overall in this reaction. You got you got you get halogenoalkanes that they are produced, and there's a wide variety of halogenoalkanes that are that are produced in this reaction. Now, if you remember, yes, uh, the reaction had three steps. First one being your initiation. So what happened in the initiation? The first step was. Uh, that free radicals were produced. Does anyone know what a free radical is? What's the definition of a free radical? Any idea? Any idea? Bhaskar, Dadeen, Sam? 
Cats are like a highly reactive species. Achha, so it is a highly reactive. Okay, that's correct. It's it's highly reactive, and the reason it's highly reactive is because it's got unpaired electrons. So its bonds are not complete. So it's a species with with unpaired electrons. which is why it's going to try and bond with other things try to gain electrons from someone so the free radicals are produced and the free radicals are produced because of uv light so if you have a cl2 molecule what happens is that the two electrons in the cl2 molecule one electron goes to the, one of the cls the other one goes to the other cl and this happens because of uv light so under uv light or sunlight this happens what type of bond fission is this homolytic theek okay, hai so this one is is homolytic bond fission where the bond breaks equally and whenever homolytic bond fission happens uh, free radicals are produced because the elements are left with unpaired electrons so homolytic bond fission happens and as a result you get two cl radicals that are produced now a cl atom i mean it's basically a cl atom a cl atom is a cl radical because a cl atom doesn't have uh, a complete outer shell now these are very highly reactive and they're very electronegative as well so cl will try to gain electrons from whichever place it can find those electrons uh with the uv light because of uv light it was able to uh gain energy and free itself from the other cl atom but now there's going to be a propagation step a propagation step is a step and remember in a2 chemistry as well this reaction is pretty popular in a2 uh questions in a lot of questions you get this free radical substitution thing because when we study benzene benzene is also going to have a reaction with chlorine so so they always do some comparisons like alkanes reacting with chlorine they talk about that and then all of a sudden they start talking about benzene reacting with chlorine benzene reacts differently compared to alkanes so there was there's always this comparison that's going on with alkanes and and its free radical substitution now uh, the propagation step uh, is when the total in a propagation step the total number of radicals they remain the same and in a propagation step uh, this will this is what will happen if i have an ethane molecule so the electrons that carbon and h are sharing cl is going to try and pull those electrons towards itself it will try and bond with those with those electrons so that is that is what will as so so that is what will happen the cl will try to pull the electron away from carbon and towards itself and carbon will get its electrons back and as a result two another free radical is going to be produced which is going to be your which is going to be your uh, the cl gets its h so it becomes hcl and the carbon now is short of one bond because there's the h which was there is now gone cl has grabbed hold of that h and carbon is left with its electron and carbon is now a free radical so this is this is going to be an ethyl radical and in the next step the, the next step is again a propagation step what will happen is that carbon's radical the ethyl radical needs also needs an electron back it needs to form a bond so it's going to see a cl2 molecule the cl2 molecule is already breaking apart so so it can speed that up 
by pulling electrons from the Cl and bond with that Cl. And the electron, this electron goes back to the Cl. So it can steal electrons from or bond with one of the Cl's that are around. And one of the one of the ethane molecules is going to get substituted by, by Cl. So you got a Cl over here and uh, and another Cl radical is produced as a as a result. So this thing, these two steps, they continue to happen. They repeat endlessly. Every time what will happen is that the one of the Cl is going to get substituted. So, so the whole step is, I mean, the same two steps would just continue endlessly until all the hydrogens are substituted. So propagation step is, just a second. Anyway, so so propagation step is my keyboard is not working, so I can't copy this. So, anyways, just remember the whole thing would would continue would just repeat endlessly. The only difference would be every time there's going to be another H uh, that will get substituted by Cl. So in this case, uh, the starting scenario is one Cl is already substituted. So the whole thing repeats. You've got a Cl radical again. The Cl radical is going to attack one of the other hydrogens. It's going to pull one of the other hydrogens and bond with it. HCl would be formed and another free radical would be produced. And uh, it endlessly repeats. And the very last step is going to be that somewhere between in the propagation step, termination would happen. Termination is that any two radicals could just at any point get together to just terminate the reaction. So termination is two free radicals, they join up. So they join together. Uh, so for example, you've got uh, an ethyl radical that was produced in the in the first step above. And that ethyl radical could join up with another ethyl radical. Because both carbons need a bond and they could sort of join up. And they would form a butane molecule. So remember the products are going to be either chlorine substituted or in multiples of the same carbon atom. Uh, if you start off with one carbon atom, two carbon atom molecule, you'll end up with a four carbon atom molecule. So any number of uh, products would be formed. Uh, you could have, you could have somewhere in the middle, you could have a radical with two CLs or three CLs substituted and they could be another Cl radical and they could just join up together. And when they join up, they would form another chlorine substituted molecule, which is, which is going to be this one. It's going to be CH2 and Cl. So are the, are the three steps clear? You've already done this. Is this clear? Yes, sir. That's a, so you've got you've got termination now. You have to remember one thing, and that is that uh, whenever there is there is free radical substitution going on, the carbon carbon bonds don't break. So if you have two carbon atoms, your products will either have two carbon atoms or two carbon atom radicals can join up to form a four carbon atom. You're never going to get a three carbon atom molecule. You're never going to get a five carbon atom molecule. It's always going to be a multiple of. So for example, if I, if I started off with propane, so remember the hydrogens are randomly getting substituted. So if I, if I start off with propane, propane has three carbon atoms. So propane has one, two, and 
three carbon atoms. Imagine that there are lots of H and CLs around it, uh, and the and the and the hydrogens are getting substituted by Cl. Now, at any one point, any one of these carbon atoms could be a radical. It's either going to be the first carbon atom, or it could be the carbon atom that could be in the in the middle. Uh, think of all the other bonds. Like, I mean, there could be hydrogens and Cl that would be getting substituted over here. And the same over here. So, so any of the three carbon atoms could be a radical. Uh, the first and the last one are kind of the same one. So, uh, so basically, you will get two types of radicals, and they would join up in multiple ways. Like the three, this radical could join up with the other carbon atom, and this is the radical, and they could join up over here in the middle, or maybe this carbon atom is a radical and the other carbon atom uh, has a radical right in the center. So they could kind of join up over here in the middle. Or it could be that you have three carbon atoms and the middle one is the radical. And the other one, there's another three carbon atom and the middle one is the radical. And they could kind of join up somewhere in the middle. So you would get lots of six carbon atom molecules that would have different shapes and different branches. Uh, is this clear, this thing? Yes, and the rest, Hafsa Nadeen, Alicia, is this clear? So, so remember, there are lots and lots of combinations that could happen. Uh, and in the propagation step, remember the hydrogens are get, getting randomly substituted. So think of that, you can have six CLs, you can have four CLs, you can have any number of CLs around it. The CL radicals are coming in and, and the CLs are getting substituted over here. Uh, but, but during the process, one or either of these carbon atoms could be a radical. And that would lead to different products in the termination step. If you have three carbon atoms, you'll get all sorts of arrangements. If you have four carbon atoms, the number of arrangements or the number of possible combinations could be a lot more. Uh, but at any point, the three carbon atoms are always together. Like over here, even over here, it's these. Th so even over here, these three carbon atoms and these three carbon atoms are still together. So the carbon-carbon bond is not breaking. Even over here, these three carbon atoms are together and these three carbon atoms are together. The carbon-carbon bonds between the propane chain, they're not breaking. And the same applies to this. So you'll get multiples of threes, but never at a single point would the, would the bond break. Uh, which means, as a, can anyone guess, will you get this one if you have... Just a second. This one. Can you get this combination from propane? It's six carbon atoms, but can you get this combination from propane? No. You can't because you can't split it into groups of three because because remember one group of three carbon atoms is going to connect with another group of three carbon atoms. So if you have this, you can't get this because it's either going to be four. I mean, if, if either if they're connecting over here, so it's basically a two carbon atom molecule or radical getting connected with a four carbon atom radical, right? So you can't you can't split it into groups of three like the ones that I've done above. Uh, if I split it over here again it's one side is four carbon atoms the other one is three carbon atom, two carbon atoms so so this one is not going to be obtained from from propane that's not possible sir yes like for example we have propane can we have like two radicals in the same molecule like for example the carbon on the right and the left can can it be like radical at the same time both of the atoms uh, you, you can actually get uh, two radicals at the same time that is a possibility a, a low probability but yes that is possible like like maybe i mean like over here uh two not chlorine the, radicals approaching uh, yeah. so so maybe a chlorine radical is attacking and pulling the h over here 
and there's another chlorine radical which is attacking and pulling an H over here. So the two carbon atoms could be radicals at the same time as well. That's that is a probability. Okay. I said then uh, you might get questions like this as well. That uh, let's say there's a there's a propane molecule. There's another question. So let's say you have a propane molecule and they're saying that in this molecule, you're getting a uh, chloropropane. So the question is, I mean, you can get all sorts of molecules. Now, chloropropane is one type of molecule. So they're saying that one of the chlorines is getting substituted and you're getting one type of molecule, which is chloropropane. And they're now saying that you get two types of chloropropane. You either get, there's a chance of getting one chloropropane and there's a chance of getting two chloropropane. What is the probability of getting either one of them? So you might get one chloropropane. Remember, this is not the, I mean, this is not the, I'm not writing a list. It's, it's one chloropropane and this is two chloropropane. Propane. So the question is, here are your three carbon atoms. And during free radical substitution, you get you can get chloropropane. One, uh, so either the chlorine substitutes over here. So there are three possibilities that the chlorine uh, or the chlorine can substitute. I mean, this is these are all your hydrogen atoms, right? And it has a total of eight hydrogen atoms. So you've I mean, they've actually given this question in past papers. So you've got uh, you've got uh, uh, a total of eight hydrogens, right? So chlorine can get substituted at any at, e, at any position. So what is the probability of getting one chloropropane, and what's the probability of getting two chloropropane? Two chloropropane is when the chlorine substitutes in the, on the middle carbon atom. One chloropropane would be when the chlorine substitutes at the carbons at the end. So who's going to answer the basket? Do you have any idea? I guess one chloropropane because it's like less crowded. The which which one has a greater probability and what is the probability? Like out of eight hydrogen atoms, right? How many hydrogen atoms, if they get substituted by chlorine, would, would you get one chloropropane? Like if I substitute this H by CL. What is this? Is this one chloropropane or two chloropropane? One. That's one, right? So the same is the case over here. What if this H gets substitu substituted? You still get one chloropropane, right? Oh, six upon eight for chloropropane. Is that what you mean? Yes. And the same applies over here. Like if if this hydrogen gets substituted use by CL, that is still one, chlor one chloropropane, right? So that means that if you substitute any of these hydrogens on the right side and on the left side, any one of these, you get what? You get one chloropropane. Is that clear to the rest? Alicia, is this clear? Hamza, Nadine, Sam, Minail, is this clear? Um, sir, so which one would have the greatest probability? So that means out of the eight hydrogen atoms, if you substitute chlorine at this one, this one, this one, or this one, or this one, yeah, out of six of them. So out of a total of eight hydrogens, six of them are going to give you what? They're going to give you one chloropropane. You're only going to get two chloropropane when when these two hydrogens, any one of these two hydrogens, they get substituted. Like if the CL gets substituted over here, you get two chloropropane. Or if the CL gets substituted over here, you get two chloropropane. So you had a total of eight hydrogen atoms. Any one of them could be substituted by CL, right? To get chloropropane. So out of those eight, six of them are going to give you one chloropropane. And so six out of eight will give you one chloropropane and only two out of the eight hydrogens will give you two chloropropane. So the probability of getting uh, one chloropropane is a lot higher because this, this, or this, or this, or this, or this 
any one of them getting substituted would give you one chlorpropane. Is that clear? Yes. Yes, sir. And out of the eight, only the middle ones, if they get substituted, would you get two chlorpropane? So out of the eight hydrants, only two of them, if they get substituted, would you get uh, would you get two chlorpropane? So that probability is going to be a lot lesser. So you got a question like this on probabilities as well in the past paper. So, so just remember uh, a few tips on this. Uh, we'll just move on from uh, free radical substitution. Remember free radical substitution. And also remember, this is important that uh, I did write this. Free radical substitution is not limited to alkanes only. It can happen in any alkyl chain, even if it's a carboxylic acid free radical substitution will take place but in the carbon chain the carbon chain looks exactly like a like an alkane chain so it's going to happen or uh, so the rest is uh, alkanes do undergo combustion so they have a combustion reaction and pretty much that's it they don't have a lot of other uh, reactions so they undergo uh, combustion and uh, a combustion reaction. You have complete combustion, you've got incomplete combustion. So in a combustion reaction, you have, if you have an alkane, it's a, that's a C5H10, H12, sorry, O2. And uh, every organic compound is, if it contains carbon, hydrogen or oxygen, it will have exactly the same equation. It's going to form carbon dioxide and and H2O. Uh, and you can balance it. It's going to be it's going to be uh, five carbon dioxide and six H2Os, and that's five, 10, 16. So that's eight, eight oxygen molecules. That's it. And if it's an incomplete combustion, it's going to be you will get carbon, which is soot, you'll get carbon monoxide, uh, which is a harmful poisonous gas. Those are the things that you're going to get. Now we're going to move to something that is uh, closer to benzene. So we, we're coming closer and closer to benzene. And that is alkenes. Now alkenes, again, are, so alkenes, al alkenes are basically, I'll just talk about hybridization right now. And after alkenes, we'll switch to benzene. Alkenes are the ones that are the most similar to benzene. So an alkene is an unsaturated hydrocarbon. Uh, even if it's not a hydrocarbon, it's if you have a carbon-carbon double bond, it's still it's still an unsaturated alkene. So remember that every molecule is going to have multiple functional groups. Unsaturated means you've got a carbon-carbon double bond. So I'm just going to talk about uh, how do alkenes get that double bond? What type of hybridization does it have? SP2. So alkenes have sp2 hybrid orbitals. Now again, they they are carbons. So carbon has exactly the same four electrons. But in the case of uh, so in the case of alkenes, what happens is that three of the electrons, they get attracted by atoms. Three of them. And the fourth electron, no one attracts it, or no one is interested in, in it initially. So the fourth electron is kind of unchanged. So that's so that's kind of your fourth electron, which is not being used for any specific purpose. So carbon makes normal bonds uh, and the atoms, there's an atom that's pulling the electron over here. There's an atom that's pulling electrons over here. And there's an atom that's pulling electrons of carbon on this side. So the angles are 120 degrees and it is trigonal planar. And you should know all the details about this. Uh, you've got
ठीक है बाजा विल जस्ट एंडिंग इट ठीक है विल जस्ट एंडिंग इट ओवर हेयर This is known as an sp2 hybrid orbital. This one is also known as an sp2 hybrid orbital. This one is also known as an sp2 hybrid orbital. So the orbitals are changing shape. The electrons. Remember, carbon initially had four orbitals: two p, two s one, two p x one, two p y one, and two p z one. So carbon initially had four electrons. One electron gets pulled over here, so the orbital shape changes. You start calling it an sp2 hybrid orbital. One electron gets pulled over here, so the orbital shape changes. So you start calling these. You just give them different names. It's still the same electron, except you now call them sp2 hybrid orbitals. So electrons get pulled in different directions, and they are now called sp2 hybrid orbitals. The fourth orbital. Remains exactly unchanged, and that's your that's your unchanged p orbital. So that is it. So that is sp two hybridization. Carbon in sp two hybridization is only bonded to three atoms, whereas the fourth p electron in the p orbital. Doesn't do much. It is involved in pi bonding, and we'll discuss that in the next class. Then, ठीक है. So is this all clear so far? And in the next class, we'll we'll study alkenes and we'll study benzene right next to it. Benzene is something that is very very similar to alkenes. Sorry, is is this clear? Have I clear? Everything good? Nadine, Sam. Okay. So let's continue tomorrow.